So local activists are turning a spotlight back on the Boston Police Department. They've been under surveillance as part of a program that's supposed to look out for national security. The activists have filed a lawsuit accusing the police of spying and interfering with their right to free speech and assembly. Our guest is one of the plaintiffs. We'd like to welcome Susan Barney and also with us from the National Lawyers Guild Executive Director, Ursula Mastin-Lajos. Thank you both very much for being with us. Thanks for having us. I want to talk with Susan Barney because uh, they not only spied on you maybe, but they actually brought you in for questions. So talk about what you were doing and, and, and why the, you think they brought you in. Um, in January of 2009, there was a group of activists that came together to bring attention to the massacres that were happening by the Israeli government against the people of Gaza. And um, while these massacres were continuing to go on, there was a lack of information reaching the American public about exactly what was happening with U.S. taxpayers' money. So we um, were involved in a creative action at the Israeli consulate to bring attention to the ongoing over 65-year um, colonial project by the Israeli state of ethnically cleansing the Palestinian people. Um, and at that protest, we did what was called the die-in, which is an, a, a creative way to express uh, in very visual terms um, uh, the kind of massacre that was taking place in Gaza. Um, we were arrested, uh, four of us were arrested during that protest. and. Um, while we were being booked, we were eventually taken individually uh, into a room uh, and interrogated. And we were asked questions which I understand um, are against constitutionally protected, my constitutionally protected freedom of speech. Um, uh, of course, the, 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 turning to uh, Ursula Massimilados, this is a, a a controversial stand about a controversial issue, but on the other hand, uh, where is the national security threat here? Uh, there was really no national security threat. Um, uh, what uh, this group of activists did, it was exactly what uh, we as um, members of public, American public, are allowed to do. Uh, we have a First Amendment rights and we are allowed to a protest allowed to express our opinion. And that's what happened in January 2009. There was a group of people who went to the Israeli consulate and they expressed their opinion. And uh, they were arrested, they were removed from the place, and then they were charged. Eventually, all charges were dismissed. The national lawyers give their represented uh, all four. Uh, but uh, uh, during their time in jail, as Susan said, they were interrogated. So. Uh, the National Lawyers Guild was informed about this interrogation and we asked the department, police, Boston Police Department, to give us reports from this uh, interrogation. And the department refused, saying that there was no interrogation. So here we are, we have four activists who say that each of them was interrogated for 20, 30 minutes, and then the department is saying, no, nothing like that happened. So we filed a, a FOIA request for all four. Freedom of Information Act Freedom request, of Information right. Act request. And after months of going back and forth, we received a letter from the Boston Police Department saying that they cannot release any documents because of security reasons. So that's what prompted us to file a lawsuit. So everything started in January 2009, and in August 2011, uh, we filed a lawsuit with the uh, ACLU um, in which we uh, asked the court to order the Boston Police Department and Boston Regional Intelligence Center, which is one of two fusion centers that we have in Massachusetts, to release documents that they have uh, on those four activists and also documents that they have on other peaceful um, organizations that uh, are very active in Boston working on different political causes. Susan, this arrest, uh, this wasn't at least on a pretext of saying, well, they didn't have a permit or maybe they were interfering with people walking down the street. Or, could those have been an issue here too? Well, I think actually, Chris, that, that this case exposes some of the structures that are in place, that the government has in place to suppress dissent against anybody who is speaking out against the status quo. And, and questioning government policy. Those structures often remain invisible, particularly to um, those of us who benefit 
from the system. And so I think it's really fundamentally important, given the exposure of this case, to be asking the question, why is the government attempting to suppress um, dissent? And to answer that question, I think it's impossible unless we look at structural and institutional racism and white supremacy. Could it be that, because I know the police department officials say this, we only do this kind of thing when we have suspicion. Could it be that there are people here who uh, want to nonviolently express opinions, and yet there might be some connection because maybe somebody who has something more sinister in mind might want to, I guess, maybe exploit that? Well, I can tell you this much. The agents from BRIC that interrogated us. The unit at, least, at the police department. Yeah. Yes, at least two of them are at every single protest that I'm at, regardless of what the protest is about. They show up when there's protests about immigrants' rights in front of the state house. They show up when there's protests um, for quarry reform, for Palestinian rights, for um, Occupy Boston. Occupy Boston. When we come together to support, when we come together to support the case of Tarek Mahana, they are at, at almost every protest, which tells me that whenever historically oppressed communities come together to work for improving their lives and within a system which at every turn is, is invalidating and robbing them of their right to a life of joy, ease, and beauty, they are criminalized and repressed. Uh, briefly, Ursula, uh, like the uh, police at the anti-war meeting in Jamaica Plain with former city council Felix Arroyo, uh, I can imagine some people saying, this is, this is ridiculous, uh, we're just going to act like they're not there and we're just going to say whatever we want. I mean, do people in that situation, do they have any business feeling afraid to speak out or do you think that there's some kind of chilling effect? There is an incredible chilling effect. And it's not only that um, a, there, uh, there is this knowledge of officers, they are there, because as Susan said, there are some officers, they are constantly present at uh, various events. So right now they are known. But, uh, but what really has a very uh, a negative effect on, on uh, uh, um, activists, uh, or those who are just concerned and coming together to, to talk about their concerns, is uh, this fear that a person next to me might be an undercover police officer. And uh, this has incredible effect on us. And as Susan said, that how we, as members of this community, can really exercise our constitutional rights. Like J. Edgar Hoover and KGB. Thank yes. you both very much for being with us, Susan Barney and Ursula Mastin Latos. Thank you.